India operations for a company called Flurdy. Uh, so before moving forward, I need to get a sense of the audience over here. So how many of you are students? Wow. You said you know only some students are going to be here. <laughs> how many uh, entrepreneurs or people trying to start up something? Cool. And for the rest of you, just raise your hand just you didn't get a chance to raise your hand. <laughs> All right. How many people are interested in technology and gadgets? He didn't raise his hand. What is he doing? Uh, all right. Uh, so, uh, you know, Ankur uh, called me over here to just basically talk about uh, what the mobile market is all about. So, I'll tell you why I have an idea of that. So, uh, who's familiar with Google Analytics on the web? Most people. Okay. So, when someone makes a website, right, you basically integrate Google Analytics so you can start tracking how people are using your website, how many people use them, what they use it for. So, Flurry provides a similar product for mobile applications. So, a Flurry Analytics is a product which basically, if you build an application, you can use our software to start tracking how people are using your application. Um, we are the market leader in that, so by that sense, we have more data about how people use apps than any other company in the world. Um, to give an example of who uses our products, so Angry Birds, Rovio, they use basically our product for analytics. Uh, Zynga, Words with Friends, uh, Twitter, some apps, uh, let's see, Skype. Um, so because of this, theoretically, almost every iPhone and Android device in the world will have at least one app running that is using our software. So if you have an iPhone or Android device, most probably you probably be tracking it, so be careful. Um, so, we have a lot of data, right, which gives us very good insight. And by the way, I recently moved back from San Francisco about five months back. And companies based in San Francisco, typical Silicon Valley startup, and I'm trying to do the India business now. Um, so, because of that, um, I'll share some numbers about where the Indian market is. And whenever I talk about the Indian mobile smartphone market, I don't mean Blackberry. I don't mean Nokia, I don't mean Micromax. <laughs> I mean iOS and Android. And Micromax could have Android devices, so you can count them. Um, but iOS and Android. So, you know, let's take a poll. How many of you could like, take a wild guess of how many iOS and Android devices right, were active in India in 2011? I'll give you some ranges. So, you know, um, uh, let's say under 5 million, all right, uh, 5 to 10 million. Or over 10 million. Over 10 million. Over 10 million. Oh, right, 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 right. Let's do a little more, guys, right? Um, so, who says under 5 million? Okay, bold. Who says uh, 5 to 10? Now, everyone's raising their hand. Gradually, wants to see everybody else raise their hand. Uh, and over 10 million? Okay. It was 6 million. So, congratulations. We should give them some prize in the video. Um, <laughs> It was, it was 6 million and last week some news came out that how many mobile subscribers India has and that number is 900 million, right? So 6 million, 900 million, that's a huge market. So whoever's thinking about making apps, go and make them. Uh, so 6 million devices active only. Now, on average currently in the market, uh, for every, every phone, any phone being sold, at least in the urban uh, cities like right Bombay, Delhi, Bangalore. For any phone being sold, there are three Samsung phones being sold. So, Galaxy, Android, right? So, out of that 6 million to 900 million, you see where the gap is going to be made up by. It's all Android devices. Um, reason is they're cheaper, they're more flexible, you can get anything from like 7,000 rupees to 30,000 rupees. Um, and a lot of people like the flexibility that they get with Android. I'm an iPhone guy, but that's a different thing. Um, and, uh, you know, so 6 million devices is great, right? Um, you know, now what are people using on these devices, right? That's the number one question. When people think about making apps, hey, okay, cool, but you know, what should I make? So 50% of the time, 5-0, that people are spending on mobile apps is gaming. Half of the time is being spent on just gaming. So people talk about, you know, hey, let's make this cool movie app or utility app, great. New idea might be very good, but you know, half of the time people spend is using games. 30%, 30% of the remaining time is on social networking. So a huge part is because of people like us on Facebook all the time, right? So 30% is social networking. So anything else, which is entertainment, utilities, whatever you want to call that, is only 20% of the pie. 
So if you want to make something that you know is like different or entertaining or whatever, you know, make sure you have a great idea uh, and make sure you know that the product is actually very good. Um, what else? Uh, you know, aside from sort of the purely stuff, uh, I typically help a lot of startups get started either in the form of advising, mentoring, investing. Um, so you know, the, what I'm seeing right now in the past six months, in Pacific in India, is just incredible things happening. I mean, you know, the whole app boom, whether you look at Facebook or uh, mobile apps, has just created you know almost a company starting out every week trying to build something. Um, that said, it is probably one of the best times to start a company in technology because of that six billion, nine hundred million gap, combined with the fact that to start a technology business is probably the cheapest right now because you have a lot of free services like Amazon Web Servers uh, and Facebook for marketing and so on. Um, so I leave you with that thought. I think my time is running out, and you know I'll be around for some more time. So if you have any questions, ideas, any further stacks you would like to hear, let me know. Have fun. Okay, so uh, after listening to our friends, I want to make sure uh, that I'm building apps in the future. <laughs> okay, how many of you are interested in you know app development here? Okay, quite a few people. Cool, so you know uh, what you need to do, right? <laughs> okay, guys. Uh, I think there are a lot of people in the like, Let's, let's, uh, okay, let's, yeah. How many of you have been the last two bar camps, one or two bar camps? Because a lot of things, so I can repeat this one second. It's a conversation I always do about energy levels, and since this is a guest movie, the energy levels, so let's pump a bit. So, all you on screen, right after me. Yamanadu! Yeah. <laughs> 
So the system promises to be wireless. As you can see, uh, if, if you have that, which many of you must have had home theater systems in your homes, right? So home theater systems have speakers which are connected to each other, wire cables. And when you install it in your home, it's almost impossible to do it by yourself. So you will have to have an expert come in and do the installation for you. Wireless 3D promises. Uh, in fact, Ashish Agarwal, let me put in Ashish Agarwal's words. Like he puts it, he says, even your grandmother can do it. All you have to do is get hold of the speakers and the bulb socket. It's not possible to have to try it And then he has got uh, these <laughs> table tops, table tops, which they call it. These are the speakers which can connect to the bulb holder. There's a special type of bulb holder called E27, yeah. which is easily available in the market. Wherever you have these power connections for the bulb holder connected to the so all you, all your grandmother has to do is get hold of the speaker, I would request you to please be quiet for my 